bad. <laughs> I think yellow or green is in here. Yeah. I don't know where the second green one is. I also, uh, in that, um, in that completing cast, which you can look it up if you want to right now, it would have been a couple weeks ago, so maybe like 10, 15 videos before, by the time this is put up, but it's the newest completing cast up on, I, uh, talked about how it still blows me away all these years later that when people are like, they come up to me and they're like, instead of saying, hey, is this game good, or is this game fun, they'll go, uh, do you know how many hours this game is? And I'm like... What? <laughs> so, like, I understand you don't want to pay 60 bucks for, like, a two-hour game. I get that. But what if I was, like, it's the most fun two hours ever in the history of the world? Be like, not nah, sorry. Yeah, we've talked about this a bunch, but there's... People that view game quality in terms of hours just baffle me. But, at the same end, if you pick up a game, like Final Fantasy... Or, uh, not Final Fantasy. Resident Evil 3 Remake, which is too short... And it's a $60 yes. game, and yes. it's under five hours. You beat it once, and you're like, that game sucks. There are I don't times. want to replay it. Uh, an example I used on the completing cast was uh, The Order 1886, which, if you remember when it came out... I, first of all, I want to say I like The Order 1886. I thought it had a really good story. I really like the setting, and the gameplay's fine. It wasn't anything amazing. But do you remember when that game came out? The, the reviews it got, it got, like, twos and threes. Yeah, I think the Metacritic is, like, high 50s or low 60s. Right, right. And I'm thinking of, like, the, the Game Informer or the IGN. They're like, nope, two out of ten, it's short. It's like, excuse me, this is like... I agree with the with the Metacritic. It's like a it's like a six out of ten game. There are positives and there are negatives. And a negative is that it's kind of short. But when people are like, oh, literally two out of ten. It's like, dude, what? But then again, that might be the same game journalist that gives something like Journey on the PS3 a 10 out of 10, which is too boring for yeah. even me. And I, I'm not defending Order 1886. I hate games like that. I detest their existence, so I'm not in the same boat as Spencer saying that it's okay. Uh, but I feel as if sometimes journalists find like an easy target to like validate their criticism, because especially professional like big video game journalists from like IGN. They're obviously, like, they're influenced to give scores a higher number because they want to have early access and a better relationship with publishers uh, so they don't get blacklisted. Like, if IGN gave G Red Dead Redemption 2, like, a 7 out of 10, like, Rockstar would blacklist them so hard. And it's not like these publishers are paying IGN specifically, like, money. But they're paying them the idea of being scared of but how, how, not how having. Why wasn't any different back in the day? Like if if uh, Game Pro gave uh, a game like like Resident Evil Two, Capcom wouldn't be like, "We're never sending a copy to Game Pro again." You know, like I, it's just so weird how that changed. Uh, I don't know. It, they, they definitely wouldn't uh, probably go out of their way to be like, hey, do you want an exclusive preview of our newest Resident Evil or something? I yeah. don't know. I guess it could be it could be. So that's why so journalism similar. is kind of fundamentally broken, uh, like, professional-wise. Yes. All the journalism I'm familiar with is... But anyway, I got really sidetracked. Uh, I feel as if sometimes... Um, Publishers find easy targets to be like, oh, Order 1886, 3 out of 10, even though the game's obviously like a 6 or something. To just be like, we're a serious, like, critical, unbiased publication here. Because they have to give everything else a super high score. Because they have to give saying. everything else a 9 or they yeah, get yeah. in trouble. What was the, what was the, uh, Twilight Princess meme? 8.8 8 out 8 of 10. 8. <laughs> Another one that people got mad at that in retrospect is so stupid. IGN gave, like, Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire like an 8 out of 10, and one of their like bulleted like negatives was too much water, which literally those games have too much water. Is, is that actually a thing? Yeah, it, <laughs> like I would say two thirds of the game are water routes. There's too much water in that stupid game. Uh, uh, but everyone was like, uh, 8 out of 10 too much water, and it's like, people got really like bothered by it. I'm like, are you kidding me? First of all, Pokemon sucks. Even the games I like, they suck. Looking back on it, 
And actually, uh, recently, IGN gave the newest uh, Pokemon DLC like a 5 out of 10. And we're at the point where I think people are really starting to get that Pokemon and Game Freak are like incredibly cynical. Uh, yes! Here we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, by the way, speaking of Twilight Princess, 8.8 out of 10 is actually, looking back on it, pretty generous. I'm not saying it's a bad game by any means, no. but, like, it's not... If you're gonna be a hardcore raider, like I generally am, it's not a 9 out of 10. Yeah. Like, it's just not. It, it's, just the, it's just the reality of all these publishers or um, professional journalists giving games, like, always, like, a 9 plus out of 10. And people just got used to it. And if you even think about giving a game an 8 out of 10, everyone's like, what are you talking about? Because they think like an 8 out of 10's like a 3 out of 10, basically. I, uh, so back when I used to get Game Informer, and in my opinion, in the early to mid to maybe later 2000s, like from 2000, 2008, Game Informer was like a pretty good, uh, despite being made by GameStop, was a pretty good magazine. And I specifically remember freaking out when they gave GTA 4 a 10 out of 10 because they never gave 10 out of 10s. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god! Like, I'm not a GTA guy, but I was like, what? Like, the amount of games they gave a 10 out of 10 back then was, was, and I don't know if it's changed for Game Informer, but it's very low. I remember specifically they did MGS2 a 10 out of 10, which that's not a 10 out of 10. It's, MGS2 is not like a magnum opus. It's got its problems. I don't know. My my ten out of tens would be very low. It would I would probably give like I'd probably give like less than ten games. Like yeah, a 10 out of I would 10. probably say my top ten games of all time would be a ten out of ten. And another thing is that people get mad when uh when something is a ten out of ten, but like a review says like something negative about it, anything negative. There's like no a ten out of ten because that means it's not perfect. Yeah. It's like there's no perfect things in existence. Everything has negatives. All right, here's a small list of ten out of tens. Ready? Here we go. All right. Super Mario RPG, I can't think of any reason to get to not give it a 10 out of 10. Castlevania 4, again, can't think of any reason myself not to give it a 10 out of 10. Uh... <laughs> <What>? <laughs> nah, there's gotta be more. Uh... Uh... I was gonna say Mega Man Legends, but that's not a 10 out of 10. Final Fantasy 7? That's not a 10 out of 10. Dude, the simple fact that it has so many ridiculous... Lee Hart, like, okay, Chocobo, ra Chocobo breeding alone makes it not a 10 out of 10, <laughs> right? Because I don't think so I give ridiculous. it a 10 out of 10, I was just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. I, I want to say Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 is possibly one of But I'm definitely going to say Resident Evil 1 is a 10 out of 10. Yeah, I would... Resident Evil 1 probably wouldn't be a 10 out of 10 for me, it'd probably be like a 9.5, but Remake 1 is a 10 out of 10. There you go, I'll say that. Uh... Mega Man. Never mind. <laughs> I had to think about that. I was gonna say Mega Man three, Mega but Man it's X almost one. a little too long. Mega Man X one. Yeah. Yes, Mega Man X one is a ten out of ten. Yeah. There's literally not a single thing that you can fix on it. It's just it's literally as perfect as it gets. Uh, uh, Limbo of the Lost. <laughs> um, yeah. My 10 out of 10s, if, if I'm allowed to do... I always love Game Informer because it gave 0.25 increments. So if they wanted to be pedantic, they could be like, 9.75. <laughs> uh, I probably, literally, if I really thought about it, would probably have less than 10. I want to give Silent Hill 1 a 10 out of 10, but I, I can't. I can't, yeah. I can't. I can't give a single Silent Hill game a 10 out of 10. Uh, I only want to give the original Resident Evil 1 a 10 out of 10 because everything about it, it just works. Yeah, that's a reference. <laughs> everything about it just works. Uh, and notice how most of my 10 out of 10 games are relatively short, because if you have a game that's like 50 hours long, it's just so much easier to find things to nitpick about it, where you're like, oh man, this part's kind of boring, I'm just like continuing on and on. But da da Renoa. 
okay, let's just fly into space, babe. <laughs> I do like this uh, idea that uh, people are aware that Renoa is the sorceress, and they're getting rescued, so they're not like in mortal danger, but the second that they get rescued and land on Earth, uh, Renoa is going to be uh, confiscated, like, immediately. So that's a cool dilemma. My name's Renoa. Oh. Oh, gosh. I don't know what to do. Man, coming so fresh off of Final Fantasy X, Final Fantasy X in a lot of ways is very similar to VIII, but it, just all the flaws in VIII, the world building, the execution, uh, the story, it's like X just does it so much better. But there's a lot of ideas here that are very similar. Oh, Guitar Hero 2 is a 10 out of 10. I, there's not a thing I would change yeah. about it. It's like 70 songs long, and most of the songs are replayable. Uh, it has an amazing engine. Yeah. It has and a good engine. It has a good... It's not, like, overly hard, but it's hard enough that you can play it for, like, 500, 1,000 hours yeah. and not, like, FC everything. Yep. That's... Uh... Yeah, that's and Guitar Hero Two. List. Guitar Hero Two is a good one because Guitar Hero One obviously is very flawed because it's the first game, but GH Two really refined the formula like to a surprising degree, and it didn't get to the point of being like endless sequels, like derivative everything. Uh, so yeah, Two is a good one. That that might be a ten out of ten to me too. It's just it's just the best, man. And, uh, and it's very original, and nothing else has really ever done anything like it. MVP Baseball 2005. <laughs> it's literally perfect baseball game. Oh, uh, so, oh man, hold on, I gotta pull this up. Uh, so I found something out about MVP Baseball 2005 that I never knew, which blew me away. And the fact is this. Once... Okay. If you n make a character on MVB Baseball 2005 and you name him Jacob Patterson, he automatically becomes like a hundred overall, really small, like stature player that carries this huge bat that hits like 900 foot home runs. That's really weird. I never knew that. Is that like a developer name or something it's gotta be yeah i don't know i tried to look it up and uh there was surprisingly little on it but yeah just name a character jacob patterson and i was watching some videos of people doing it they were literally hitting like unironically 800 foot that, home runs it's really cool but that is so random <laughs> it's kind of like uh what it's uh justin bailey from Met metroid kind of thing you know yeah uh but yeah, Jacob Patterson, name name your character. Because uh, Ben, CIB Ben made a post where it was like, remember John Dowd from MVP Baseball 2005? The, 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 the stand-in for Barry Bonds. Because Barry Bonds didn't allow his likeness in the game. So John Dowd, this like, just in nondescript dude, is like literally 2004 Barry Bonds, which is one of the best hitters of all time. And we were like, what what's other characters like that where they're just like super overpowered? And it's like, yeah, Jacob Patterson... He, some guy, he hit, um, he hit a grounder and he hit it so hard that it got to the back wall in like a second <laughs> and it, it rolled around so much because it just bounced off it so hard that he got like a, tr like a triple easy out yeah. of it. It's crazy. I'm, I might do a video sometime where I just show that off because that is, uh, that's awesome. It reminds me of NBA Jam stuff. If you put certain uh, certain things in for NBA Jam, you played as, like, Bill Clinton or uh, other <laughs> yeah. super hyped up people. Wait, did we see the... Did we see all we're going to see with the uh, the lunar uh, enemies coming down? The lunar drop or whatever? Yeah, for the most part. Okay. Um, the important things... I, it, it doesn't really affect, like, enemy spawns at all. Uh, like, all the enemies from the Lunar Cry. But the most important thing is that it delves back on Earth. And is in the Lunatic Pandora. We're almost 
almost done with the story, huh? Yeah, we actually don't have that much to do. We might finish this in like three more settings. Wow. That includes getting Eden and all that stuff? Yeah, I wow. mean, we might get... What time is it? 7.10. We might get it today. I mean, I'm going to go through Deep Sea Center without any encounters. True, I guess that does go... Uh, that would go yeah. back pretty quick. Because we have to... We have to do the side quest. We can actually go to disc 4, like, almost immediately. Disc 3 is pretty short. Uh... Now that we have the Ragnarok, we go save Renoa, and then we can go to the Lunatic Pandora immediately, and then it's just that, and then Disc 4 starts. What's the point of no return? Uh, going to Lunatic Pandora. <laughs> and at that point, after you finish Lunatic Pandora, you can't go into any... Everything's time, uh, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, time compression. Time compressed, okay. Um, so there is a, a way to go back to the world map, and you can go back to the Ragnarok, which I talked about, the CC clubs there, but yeah, you can't go back to any of the towns, or any of the other areas either, I don't think. I was just talking at length about how I like how JRPGs, you know, open up and let you do all the stuff again. I really hate when JRPGs do that. Where, like, you get to a certain area, and they're like, Whoa, 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 hold on, you can't do that anymore. FF9 does that for no reason. When you get to disc 4, there's very little story reason, but there's a lot of places that are cut off from you then. And I hate that. That really bothered me. Yes. Uh, yeah, in Final Fantasy 9, even, like, some areas, like, it, one of the, like, the, the rat people race get, like, obliterated. And then that town has, like, permanently missable things. Yes, and I missed some things in there, and, and that made me mad. One of the side quests to get an extra ribbon is talking to the Moogle merchant and giving him a gill every time you see him. And that Moogle merchant shows up in that rat town, and that's the only place that I missed them. And I was like, well, I can't get the ribbon now. Yeah, and Spencer that's... got screwed because he, was, he wanted every, like, sword, and, like, there's a sword there that you can't get anywhere else other than buying it there. Yep. Uh, and yeah, I wanted every ability, and now I got every single ability except for one by Steiner, because I didn't care about every sword or whatever, but I wanted every ability, and it's only that sword, which is right there. Stupid! Like, if it's a very specific story reason, like the Rat Town thing, I guess, but at the end of FF9, uh, a bunch of roots from the Tree of Life, uh, which I think is what they call it come out and just cover random towns and it's like that's yeah, not that's, story that's not story reason yeah, that's like super sucks. stupid which is also why i haven't beaten the game yet i just did it and i might not ever because whatever they were no i'm back after five seconds hey <laughs> were they gonna send her to space Cause that looks just like the thing that yeah. uh, Adele. Uh, there's a Laguna flashback uh, where they trick Adele into going into here, and then they send her to space. <sighs> wow! From literally the opening cutscene. Yeah, the opening cutscene's weird because it's like the backdrop's like a sunset instead of like this mechanical place. So that's a little weird. Squall, Renoa. I am in love with you. <laughs> we were separated for two minutes. Hey, Renoa, uh, are, are seeds still under your command for the four, the, the, the timber owls? Yeah, at this point, uh, the <laughs> seeds and Balam Garden and all the gardens don't matter at all. Literally. It... There's so many things, like concepts and, like, police organiza or organizations in general just stop mattering in this plot. The power creep made it ridiculous. Yeah. Now the only thing that matters, even Edia doesn't matter, it's just Ultimecia. Okay, and Adele. I apologize. But Adele is kind of Ultimecia or something. Yeah. Know. Oh, yeah, I guess we won't do this side quest. Hey, it's Ward! I've seen it before. You sure have. The silent big guy for you. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, wait, I can't even do that. I'm just a little embarrassed of all. 
Oh, I thought they were going to make me go to Esther immediately. I kind of forget where I made my save, but I think I can do some of the side quests now. Yes! I think that's a, a good thing to think about, what to do after Adele descended to Earth and the Lunar Cry just happened. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, uh, what, should, what should we do now? Oh, look at this guy! He's he's wondering he's what we do about now! Things. Uh, weren't you also the people who literally went to me a million times and said, Squaw, what do we do? Hey, Quistus, remember the time they got locked inside of, uh... General Car Caraway's? Caraway's random trick room, because you're an idiot. Zell! So sorry. Yeah, that's weird. The entire game, they're like, Squaw, do something! And then when he's, like, thinking about what to do, they're like, Look at this guy, thinking about what to do in junk. Yeah. What an idiot! That's why... I <laughs> Replaying this game, I was like, I hate everyone except for Squall. And Squall has problems, but like, he actually does stuff. I don't hate Selfie. Alright, so now that we have the Ragnarok, we can do some extra stuff. Do you hate Selfie? Quista sucks. She's just kind of incompetent and doesn't do anything. Zell, does Zell suck? Yeah, Zell wanted me to save Renoa while Galbadia Garden was attacking, and they were oh, landing yeah. their ship into Balam Garden. Alright, so... Urban we... sucks, obviously. <laughs> Man, this is the first time we had all six members in a while. Yeah. So this is the uh, island closest to hell. Um, this is where you get pretty much all the end game uh, draw points. Uh, but you just go around here. It's a little weird how it works. Like you just find stuff. Oh my God, aura! Oh man, there's so much. I'll show everything. Meteor. Are, are these random, or are they just like... They're all... It's static. It's always the same every time. Oh, okay. God. Triple. Triple? I feel like Aura is, like, literally the best one. It's one of the best, but the, the two better ones are Full Life and Ult uh, Ultima. Full Life, really? Holy... Oh, my God. Holy is actually not that useful. It doesn't oh, well. really, like, scale that high for, literally like, stats. Either. Holy is decent to put on, like, uh, Elemental Defense, because it, like... Text against a couple things. There we go. Literally ultimate. How many? Not Wasn't many. there a thing where you had to pay a bunch of money to have a chance to draw ultimate? Yeah. Uh, full life, in my opinion, is the hardest one to get uh, 300 stacks for. Because ultimate, we can go back to uh, the Shumi village and pay the guy just 5,000 gil to get like 10 ultimas. And it refreshes after like 5 10 minutes. So, in my opinion, full life is the hardest because it's it's basically only exists on this island. Wow. By the way, if I didn't have encountered none uh, happening, we'd be fighting like really, really hard stuff. T um, uh, t uh, t Rexes. T Rexes and like Marlboros and uh, Hex Dragons. But the thing about the island closest to hell is that the enemies are like artificially scaled up, so they have way better stats than anything else you find in the game. So, for like example, Marlboros can uh, like spawn near that Chikabo forest thing I showed, that, like, super hidden thing. But the Marlboros there are, like, way less strong than the ones here. Are they only uh, around uh, the outside, or are there some on the inside as well? Of the, of the island? There are some on the inside, but not many. It's not worth it. Got it. So when I was doing this, I pretty much exclusively play my Switch in portable mode. And I have a controller called the Split Pad Pro, which has, like, a turbo button. So, when I was doing this, I would just uh, use it on times three and just use turbo to find all the stuff automatically. Based. But I can't use it because Split by Pro isn't wireless. So, yeah, there's some um, ones. I think there's like an Ultima around here. Yeah. I've done this so much that I almost like completely remember. I think there's an Aura in the middle here. Yeah. Based. I think there's one over here. It's not a. Might just be another aura. <laughs> Alright. The other one is island, island closest to heaven. I think it's. This How one. long does it take uh, in real time for draw points to uh, come back? I would say only like 10 minutes. Hmm. No, this is that. Further up. Yeah. So Island Close to the Heaven is kind of just the nerf version. You can get some good stuff like Aura and Holy. 
But it has some junk in here too, like Tornado. Like, Tornado at this point is not good. But this is how you get all the uh, really good stuff. And you could not get here before uh, the Ragnarok. No, the Blomgarn cannot uh, get here at all. Alright, so I just wanted to show that. So I'm also going to show how you... Because um, at this point, the next save I'm loading is... Uh, I'm not doing an initial level run anymore because it's too easy. And I want to do these side quests... Uh, with some semblance of difficulty. So I'm going to show you how I power leveled, uh, how to min-max. So at this point, um, if you have leveled up your GFs, uh, some of them give you, um, like, permanent stat boost, uh, things. Like, if it has one. Yeah, so, ones like this. So, if you save all your level ups to now, and you have Strength Bonus, uh, Magic Bonus, Spirit Bonus, and Vitality Bonus, um, HP Bonus, uh, for Brothers, uh, I think Carbunkle gives, yeah, Vitality Bonus, and I think Leviathan is Spirit Bonus. Yeah, at the top. Yeah. So, that's what you do, you just junction everything to one character like Squall, and then... Uh, do I still have that Rosetta Stone? Yeah. So the Rosetta Stone gives you the ability times four. Uh, so just use that on something. Alright, so Exa Alexander has it now. So at this point, uh, we can junction four of them now. So what I did was Magic, Spirit, Vitality, Strength. Honestly, I would say just ignore Magic and do HP instead. But my save file is already made, so I can't really do it. Uh, Squall is the best way to start this, um, but the initial couple battles are going to be the hardest, because the enemies here... Do you kill off the other two characters? Yes. The battles here are really tough. Hex Dragon. See ya. It's probably gonna die. Yeah. Holy crap. So the first couple times you do this... Okay, that was weird. Uh, you're probably gonna die because uh, Squall doesn't have, like, strength plus 60 and plus 40, so his strength is only, like, at 100. Yeah, he's dead. So, the hardest thing is getting this started. But once you have a couple level ups going and Squall's strength, because if he wins one battle, he's going to get like 10 levels at once, and then his stats are going to be way higher. Yeah. So just imagine I did that. Uh, I don't really want to show it. Yeah, that would be pretty annoying. Uh, so I have this ready. So everyone's at level... Well, the main party is at level 100. So my end game party is going to be Renoa, Irving, and Squall. Uh, Irving has... The second best limit break. Uh, Zell is probably technically the best, but I just don't really like using it. And Renault is the best. I have her specifically as the cover uh, character. So the way that Renault works is that every time that she gets attacked, she has a small chance of Angelo counterattacking. And having a cover counter Renoa, specifically uh, with like Vitality and Spirit plus 40, uh, she's at max uh, stats. If I didn't do magic, she would also be at max uh, HP. But Renault is the absolute best for the tank of the team. Uh, and she also has defend. So, uh, typically Squall and Irving are always going to be in yellow bar health. And it's like the same thing. It's just auto haste. At this point, I don't need to do strength plus 40 because this uh, thing is so high. So I have speed plus 40 instead. Um, but Squall could have gotten to 255 strength with Ultima at level uh, 7. So at this point, uh, the only benefit that we have is just a little bit bulkier, but enemies are also scaled way higher, too. Yeah, you got that 255 on both him and Irving. Yeah, they both have either Strength plus 60 or Strength plus 40, so that's how they hit uh, those damage numbers. Heh. So we're doing some Jumbo Pactar. 
Can I touch it? No, you, I, you <laughs> don't have encounter on not on? Maybe? Yeah. Bye. So at this point, things are not going to die to one resin Kukin, which is cool. And we're going to do Jumbo Cactar. So this is one of the optional GFs. <laughs> he really is Jumbo. I have a mustache! Alright, what's everyone's favorite? Chocobos, Cactars, Moogles, Tonberries. Did I mention them all? I think so. All the, all the cute ones that are that are with everything. Oh my god. So he is gonna die. I don't think so, actually. Remember, the, the enemies at level 100 scale to have a lot of HP. But that was insanely lucky. I'm gonna say Cactar, by the way. Cactars are based. I like Cactar. And I'm not. tired of pretending yeah, they're not. Not dead. Wow. <laughs> Can you make those yes. bullets? Wow. Yeah, things have way more HP. Are you missing on purpose? No, I'm trying, dude. Still not dead. So, he's also yeah. not doing anything. I don't know why he's not doing anything. I am trying, dude! <laughs> I don't know why the timing's so weird. <laughs> Let's do a uh, fast step. Now he's dead. When Irving starts doing zero damage, you know you killed him. But I don't know why he didn't do anything, but as you can see, things he actually have- He literally just stood there the whole time. Squall literally did a line heart and he didn't die, so that's how much HP things have. So, like, over 100,000. <laughs> so Cactar is amazing as well. Uh, maybe not as game-breaking as uh, Tom Berry, but when you get him, he has all the strength, vitality, magic, spirit bonuses automatically. And then also has stuff, insane stuff, like a Vade Junction and a Luck Junction. The other stuff isn't super helpful. Can Count you... Sorry. Go ahead. Can you get all of them up to level 100? Yes. In fact, the other uh, save file I have, I have all the characters at level 100. Uh, I actually had the power grind two times because I was like, I want to do everything at level 100 for the ultimate weapon and Bahamut stuff. Um... But I already had a save file already made where everyone was level 100 right before Lunatic, Lunatic Pandora, so I was like, oh, guys, I gotta do it again. Mm. But it really did. It, level scaling in this game uh, happens so quickly that it really only takes like a couple hours. Wait, it, but uh, you can get all GFs to level 100. Yes. Too. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if just because your um, party members get to 100 that they don't get no, experience. No, uh, GFs get uh, experience regardless of your yeah. party level. Oh, Put yeah. on that encounter none. I took it all specifically so I can inflict statuses on Squall and then I forgot to re-equip it. Dude, any any RPG, JRPG, should have encounter none. If you don't want to fight stuff, you don't have to fight all stuff. Alright, we're just going to do Deep Sea Center. Spencer doesn't have a game ready, so... No! It's fine. So all the way down here. Hold up. Where we I... at, boy? This is cool. So, like... Yeah, what if, like, Squall just flying around and he's like, Hey, look at this thing. Let's stop at it. It is cool. Did he say large draw point? Uh, I don't think so. I didn't read what it said, though. Alright, so the gimmick of this is don't move while the, uh, the core is shining. This thing give you a heads up that yeah. this is... Is this this is the hardest place in the game, right? I would say so, yeah. No! I can only walk. That's why I'm walking. Walking. <laughs> Tip. Nothing personal. <laughs> No! So you, you, you ran away, but Renault is still sleeping there. Yeah. 
Focusing. Focusing. The funnier one is uh, in Final Fantasy X, when a character gets petrified and then attack again, they break into a million shards. And then when you run away, it's just like, they're back. <laughs> they're not dead. Wait, so if that happens, uh, they're out for the battle. They're out for the battle, but like once the battle restarts, they're just back in existence. Yeah. That's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, suspens suspension of disbelief there for sure. Alright, buddy. That's enough of that. You may take one step. You now have literal the worst cancer ever in the history of the world, because this is pure radiation. Pretty much. Oh, cool! Alright, so there's a couple force encounters here. Uh, but because we're level 100, we can fight stuff. Holy crap! I can actually play the game! Holy crap, Lois! <laughs> Let's see what percentage of, uh... I'm actually curious, how much, uh, HP does it have? You remember when we scanned the level 8 Fire Dragon from, uh, the Laguna Flashback? It had, like, less than 10k HP. Yep. I wonder how much HP it has, now. Probably, like, 4. Level 100. 77,000, not bad. I don't know why it's level 90. I guess there's just some, uh, scaling sort of things going on. Oh my god. They're fine. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Thank you, Counter. Why did it take so much for Squall and Irving, but not Renoa? Renoa is 255 uh, Vitality Spirit, and Squall and Irving are definitely not. Ah. Why can't I do Renzo Kukin today? I'm kinda mad. What?! <laughs> okay. I don't think it's dead. <laughs> oh! <laughs> that would wake you up. Yes. Never. <laughs> Back and attack, you piece of crap. Okay, arrow. Not zero! If you don't hit these all, I'm leaving. Wow. I can't do it <laughs> Why can't I do it? You literally tried. You literally I'm not, tried. I'm not playing this up as a bit. I literally can't do it today. Is it like a timing thing? I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. Oh crap. Everyone's probably dead. Except for Bell. What did you just use? Meteor. Oh my god. Yeah, enemies at higher level also use things that actually hurt you. Okay, that actually didn't do that much damage. That, like, three frames a second for Irving is pretty cool. I like I like how stylized it looks. Yeah. Boom. Renzo Kugan. <laughs> okay. Calm down, Squall. It's a small thing, but I really like how when you're using uh, Irving's limit break that it goes to zero. Once it's dead. Yeah. So that way you don't waste a bunch of uh, valuable ammo. Yep. Because it doesn't matter if you use an extra Runzo Kukin, it's not it's not limited in no. any way. So this is the weirdest thing. Uh, why do you wish to fight? And you're supposed to know that this is a hidden third option. Because if you pick up the other ones, uh, it does not advance stuff. And the th in hidden third option was it's our nature. Wait, so if you pick it wrong, does it just reason. ask you the same question again? Yeah, you have to do, like, everything from the start uh, again. Uh, oh, from the start again. Yeah. Uh, it, like, starts you from, like, the beginning of the room. Wow. This music is awesome. It is very awesome. And it's Baja Mood. Is this where you get 
Eden? No. Yeah, Bahamut is just a, a, a fight. G-F-I. Very fair point. Humans are weird. Custom Renzo Kuken. That's a six hit. That's pretty good. With a line art. Oh my god. Ah! <laughs> by the way, Lionheart is so much better than Titus's Blitz Ace by a million. Blitz Ace only does nine hits versus Squall's 18 hit times three attack while it died. Lion Lionheart is literally on the exact same level as Omni Slash, and I'm sick of pretending it is. I think Lionheart's way better than Omni Slash. What? What? In terms of coolness, uh, Omni Slash is probably like cooler, but Lionheart's way better than Omni Slash or Blitz Ace. So he just said he feared the humans, and now he works for them. Rip. He was fought into submission. He doesn't have a choice. My name is. All right, so there's a second part of this, but we can't do it yet. Uh, there's like a tree that spawns from the bottom, and it's a little confusing how this works. I think you go into the Ragnarok like this. You have to enter it, and then you come back out. You can just talk to Irving and then start flying again. And I think that's a trigger to uh, get it to go. That's... But I was a little bit confused because uh, I would, like, leave, and I remember, like, going to, like, Balam the town, and then leaving, and then it didn't work. And I had to literally look it up, and it's like, enter... Yeah, here we go. 